The Mario Grande project is very unique. I mean, like I keep saying, it's an entire district because the strike length of the project covers over 145 kilometers in length and by 50 kilometers wide. It's truly an enormous area. And to explore and to understand this area, we've worked on this for the past 15 years. Hello and welcome to Assay TV. We're introducing Blue Sky Uranium today, an exploration company with significant assets in Argentina. And I'm very pleased to be speaking with Nico Cacos, who is president and CEO of the company. Nico, how are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you very much for having me on your program. Thanks, Nico. So could you provide just a quick introduction to the company for viewers who are new to Blue Sky Uranium? Absolutely. <laughs> Blue Sky is involved in uh, exploration and uh, advancing probably the world's newest, not just uranium deposit, but uranium district. This is a district that has the potential to rank amongst uh, the largest uh, uranium bearing districts in the world with some of the lowest operating costs. So a truly unique opportunity, I think, that tr sets us apart from all uh, other explorers out there and our peers. Fantastic. This is uh, quite exciting, um, given where we sort of stand at the moment within the uranium market. Um, so let's go into a little bit more detail. Traditionally, if you think of Argentina, you think maybe of lithium um, or, or, or other assets. Um, what, what's the geology that makes um, your properties really interesting right now um, in terms of uh, finding great uranium discoveries? Well, uh, without being a geologist, I'll dabble into this area. Um, what makes uh, Argentina, I think the opportunity in Argentina really arises from the lack of exploration in that country. Argentina, only about less than 30 years ago, has opened up for mining exploration to allow foreign investment to actually begin to explore and to make uh, mining discoveries and, and identify mining deposits in that country. And it, during that time period, before that, there was virtually no exploration whatsoever. It was all basically government controlled at that time. So Argentina currently ranked as the world's seventh largest country and is extremely underexplored. And I think this is what created a very unique opportunity in Argentina to make new discoveries. And I think uh, our you know blue sky uranium is an exact case and example in that in the southern part of Argentina, in the northern part of uh, the Patagonia, that's where we discovered not just a deposit, but an entire district that remained unclaimed and for basically for picking. And, and uh, with our team, we we're able to identify that area and work on it for the past 15 years and identify uh, a tremendous uh, potential for, uh, for our investors and our shareholders. Excellent. So let, well, let's delve into the projects a bit more specifically then. Your, fra your flagship is uh, the Amarillo Grande. Um, could you take us through that project, please? Well, the Amarillo Grande project is very unique in that uh, it's, it is, like I keep saying, it's an entire district because the strike length of the project covers over 145 kilometers in length and by 50 kilometers wide. It's truly an enormous uh, area. And to explore and to understand this area, we've worked on this for the past 15 years. And it really has been in the last three or four years that we really began to accelerate the development of this project. It was in 2017 that we made the discovery of the Ivana deposit. We uh, uh, in, published our first uh, resource uh, estimate in 2018. And then within a year, uh, we published our initial PEA. I think what's amazing is that upon embarking on our first drill program, we were able to quickly discover uh, a deposit and advance it right away to a PA. It's almost unheard of. So, the, and so once we did, and and once we did all of that, then we began to look at well, what characteristics is this the kind of project that uh, is competitive in this environment? So we did uh, by doing a PEA, which is a preliminary economic analysis we're able to see that this project um, has a very low, uh, uh, has a very low um, separation cost in terms of being able to extract the uranium and the vanadium, which is in there. Uh, so the metallurgy is very positive, which means it's very cheap. 
the, in terms of uh, uh, a potential mine site, this project is basically like running a, uh, a sand uh, operation because there's no, the, the ground in which it occurs is uh, unconsolidated. So there's no blasting required or anything like that. So it's very, again, very economical. And the first PEA demonstrated that because our average costs ran about 16, just over $16 a pound in terms of uh, extracting where the average price in the, in the industry requires over $50 uh, dollars a pound in order to break even. So this is had hosted a lot of similarities with uh, actually some of the deposits in the districts we're seeing in Kazakhstan with some of the lowest and uh, cost producers in the world. That's excellent. Um, it's good, good on the cost side of things. Okay, well, let's talk about um, the next steps then. You know, what's the strategy from here? You've got this resource, but how are you gonna advance it? Well, we've got a resource on just under 23 million pounds and uh, of, of uranium. And then the next step of course is to be able to find additional deposits in this 145 uh, strike length uh, district. So we've got a, a drill program that's currently underway. We announced that in, uh, in uh, spring of this year of 2021. And we've got an additional four targets that are within a 20 kilometer radius of our current deposit. And the idea here is uh, to see if we can quickly uh, drill out and identify additional deposits so that we can double, triple, quadruple, whatever it might be, uh, the current resource that we've got right now. Yep, certainly. And um, so uh, you, do you have some uh, hard deadlines before the end of the year in terms of key milestones that investors uh, can look out for with, with regards to those um, new drilling targets? Well, yeah. In fact, a key, a key milestone is going to arrive within the next week or two in right. that we're expecting our first batch of drill results to, to come out in the next uh, week or two. So, And then that, of course, is going to assist us uh, in understanding and, and continue to, to drill out the remaining targets. So between now and the end of the year, I can foresee that the company will have continuous drill results coming out. And I think this is what is presents a very unique opportunity for investors in that <clears throat> the blue sky uh, is at a tr truly at an inflection point in terms of its uh, valuation. I think we're going to get valued uh, on on the results coming in, and if they're positive, I think we're going to see our market cap uh, adjust uh, upwards significantly. Yep, excellent. Um, well, let's talk about the company financing then and where you stand at the moment. Is your current drilling fully financed? And um, you had a, a, a raise earlier in the year. Could you talk us through that, please? Yeah, we did a raise about a month ago. We raised a couple more million dollars. So we've got just around $3 million in our treasury right now. And that is uh, more than sufficient to be able to see us through to complete the current drill program uh, right into the first quarter of uh, 2022. I think beyond that, the next stage of the company will be the initiation of a pre-feasibility study. That uh, will carry a, a higher price tag, somewhere between 10 to $15 million. And I think financing that will come at a later time, uh, hopefully uh, at a much uh, less dilutive price. And it may be a combination of debt or you know, whatever might be appropriate uh, given the, the market cap and the size of the company and the current drill results, of course. Yeah, certainly. Um, I'm just curious, um, coming back to the project now and, and um, the advancement, you know, what's the um, what's the attitude towards nuclear within Argentina? And, um, you know, you think about sort of the classical uh, locations um, and supply chains within the nuclear industry. Um, where does Argentina sort of fit within that? Is localized demand or, or Argentinian or South American demand on the increase? Are they looking to expand reactors? No, that's actually a very good question because uh, many investors don't realize that Argentina uh, has been in the nuclear business basically since the 50s, almost as long as the United States has been in the nuclear business. And they currently have. They've got three nuclear power plants in operation. They're, they're uh, announcing more that they're building. In fact, they're involved in every facet of the nuclear industry including research reactors. They build and export uh, small modular reactors and so forth. Even the president of the International Atomic Energy Agency is an Argentinian, which I think is a, a tip of the hat to the, the quality of uh, uh, nuclear knowledge uh, that uh, derives from Argentina. So, um, but all the 
uranium that's required to sustain uh, this nuclear industry in Argentina currently is being imported. And Argentina pays a real premium in order to bring that uh, uranium into the country. So this is what creates a very unique uh, opportunity for Blue Sky as being the most advanced uh, you know, uranium uh, company in Argentina with, a, with the largest uh, deposit, even at this early stage. I think we are positioning ourselves so that we can be the first supplier for uranium to the country uh, of Argentina and then be in a position to export beyond that. Right, that's very interesting. Okay, um, just coming back to your um, um, PEA that you already had done on what works prior, um, you mentioned there's vanadium. We've got some vanadium um, within the discoveries. Um, just tell us, uh, for the investors interested, uh, how that sort of works into the strategy, or is that just some nice optionality that you have if you choose to go down that route as, van as the vanadium market evolves? Well, I think vanadium is a very interesting uh, mineral in itself. Vanadium, is it, its primary use is used as a steel hardener, so as an additive to steel production. Um, but there's also a, a growing use uh, of vanadium, as, uh, like lithium is, for storage batteries. So there is a demand for your vanadium. But right now, the vanadium, as we extract uh, our mineral carnotite, it's a really a uranium vanadium mineral. So when we uh, produce the, the uranium, vanadium comes out as a byproduct with nothing, no additional uh, process having to be involved. In terms of value, it contributes anywhere between five and ten percent additional value to potentially to the project. So it's not irrelevant. It is nice to have this credit. And uh, again, because uh, vanadium is used as a steel hardener, there is a, a use for that within Argentina. Argentina also has a bustling uh, oil and gas industry, and uh, they produce. Uh, they need to generate to make uh, steel pipelines and they need vanadium in order to make to harden this. And they currently, again, import all the vanadium. So, again, we could be in a position to be able to sell our vanadium uh, locally in uh, within the country. Absolutely. OK, um, so let's just split onto the team then and talk about some of the attributes that you've got amongst your very experienced team. Could you uh, talk us through um, who's amongst them? Absolutely. Um, our team is, well, first of all, I, I'm actually really proud to be, uh, you know, leading a team of, of, of an incredible, talented uh, individuals. First of all, uh, Blue Sky is managed by the Grosso Group. And Grosso Group are basically experts in Argentina. They're, they've been pioneers there. They've been in the country uh, since uh, 1993 when uh, the country opened up for international mining and has been one of the most successful groups in that country. They've made four major discoveries. Two of their discoveries are still in production right now. And uh, Amarillo Grande, of course, being the fourth discovery. Um, heading, of course, the Grosso Group and the chairman of our board is Mr. Joe Grosso. Joe Grosso is uh, uh, truly a pioneer and a visionary in Argentina. He, gives uh, the company a very competitive advantage. In fact, he's been inducted into the Mining Hall of Fame of that country and uh, really creates a lot of good, great contact and access to uh, everywhere, government officials locally, uh, uh, provincially, federally, and throughout the mining industry. Um, also uh, heading our exploration team in Argentina is uh, uh, Guillermo Pensado. Guillermo is, our, uh, is unique in that He's a uranium uh, geologist and uh, has been educated in, uh, in Canada. Uh, so he speaks uh, very fluent English, which makes it very convenient for me to be able to communicate with him. And in fact, he has a, an incredible experience. Uh, he's worked in the past with Cameco and with uh, other major mining companies. And in fact, he also is an award-winning geologist, having been uh, uh, awarded uh, Geologist of the Year by his peers in Argentina just a couple of years ago. And heading all our engineering and uh, metallurgical work is uh, Mr. Chuck Edwards. Now Chuck is, uh, for those who don't know, is a world renowned metallurgist and uh, engineer. And uh, he was the chief metallurgist for Cameco for many, many years. And he's looking after all the uh, uh, processing work for our, our PEA and engineering studies. So we're in good hands there. Absolutely. Um, well, that's great. And um, in terms of the market and the timing, um, obviously, you know, you've got your individual projects, you focus on that and you don't pay 
so much attention to what's going on uh, with the with the uranium price, but it's not a bad time uh, to be bringing or looking to bring uh, uranium online. No, absolutely not. I mean, yes, we've been working on this project now through thick and thin from the last uranium market through the trough of the uranium recession in the last uh, decade or so. But the reason we worked on it is because we as management have always recognized the value in this asset, truly a unique. It's not every day you come across, not just a, a new low, potentially low cost uranium project, but this is a potentially low cost uranium district. So, and because of that, actually, we've actually had to fund it ourselves. Our friends and family and management, we own close to 60% of the outstanding shares of this company right now. Um, and then by having proven with the PEA that this uh, could make money in that terrible market, as the market begins to rise now, I think uh, it's going to be nothing but flowers and <laughs> sunshine for our investors. This is a, a truly uh, an environment that we have uh, been waiting for. And I think I think Amarillo Grande and the blue sky is being revalued right now uh, in the market with the rising uranium price. I think we're going to be uh, coming out of the gate, so to speak, uh, running. And uh, this is an excellent environment in which to be, uh, uh, you know, discovering more uranium deposits. Indeed, excellent. Well, Nico, thanks very much for taking us through the projects and the next steps. We really look forward to catching up on how things have progressed with Aurelio Grande later in the year. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thanks for speaking to me on SATB.